Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Northmont. Thanks for being here this morning. Uh, just a couple of things on this uh, Reign of Christ, Christ the King Sunday uh, that you need to be aware of, at least from my perspective, and then I'll make sure that I get to all of you. Um, I wanted to give a couple of announcements uh, for the uh, spiritual formation folks and let you know what's going on here moving forward. Uh, first, uh, for Advent, Spiritual Formation will be putting together a food drive for NHCO, which will start on December 3rd, so very soon. And each day during the Advent season, we'll have a food item that will need to be supplied. And so calendars will be made available next Sunday so that you know which items that are in need of. Uh, second, uh, on December 20th, uh, we'll be having a special Amos, a Ministry of Sharing, uh, we'll have a special Amos for the Christmas celebration, uh, so Spiritual Formation will provide pizza uh, while we will bring desserts. And so we'll be letting you know about that kind of moving forward, but just so you kind of have that on your mental calendar um, as we enter into the Advent season. Uh, of course, uh, we're st we start Advent next week, uh, which is uh, a wonderful and interesting and crazy time for everyone. Uh, we know that, you know, just getting over and past and through Thanksgiving is one of those deep breath moments, but then as in the church, we kind of uh, take that deep breath and we uh, pivot to the next thing, so we're excited about that as well. Um, I know there are lots of other things uh, in your bulletin that we have and, and uh, other announcements for you to be aware of, um, but let me pause for a moment to see if there's anyone else that wanted to give an announcement for this morning. Here, here, here. Yins? Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, if you are pre-K through second grade, uh, there will be Sunday school this morning, uh, and, but you are under no obligation to do so, but uh, it is available. So we have uh, Bree Lewis. Bree is over here, and uh, she has an assistant teacher. And so uh, right, at, or right before the, the second reading of Scripture, so there'll be music, and then right before the second reading of Scripture, if you would like uh, to go to pre or Sunday school, um, it is available. Uh, if you go down the hall in a very peach room, that's where they will be. And so it's down the hall and down those little steps into the CE wing. Uh, that's where that is. And so you'll see uh, Bree kind of waving about like she's on a Thanksgiving float for a second, and then she will disappear into the morning. Uh, so just know that that is available. Okay, now that, of course, I did it again, and I skipped the meet and greet part. Let us stand together and, and just say hello to all. I'll get it eventually. It'll be like 2026, but it'll, we'll, get it, we'll get there. All right, since I am the one who goofed up the order, I'll be the one to ask you to please join us as we begin our call to order. Do we have an intro? We have an intro. Boy, oh boy. I'll get it eventually. Almost six years. It's been almost six years. All right.
Good morning. Please rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. Lift up your hearts, for the Lord has looked favorably upon us. He is raising us up as a Savior in the house of his servant, David. God is showing the mercy promised to our ancestors. The Alpha and Omega shall reign always. Let us worship God. Jesus from death to life, resplendent in glory to rule over all creation. Free the world to rejoice in his peace, to glory in his justice, and to live in his love. Unite all humankind in Christ Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we reach out to our eternal and everlasting Savior, we do so with reverence and awe. We pray that Christ's mercy might extend once more. Let us go again before the throne of grace, first together and then silently. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You bless us, but we have not thanked you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We condone evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin, so that as you come to us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness for our sins, especially those we now acknowledge in the quiet of our own hearts. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, 
so far shall God separate our transgressions from us. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. So this morning is the reign of Christ, and it means the end of our liturgical, our church year. And so that means that the banners that you see around you will come down after this Sunday, and they've been up for a season, a season where we have been trying to identify who we are and, and contemplate that. And we're going to move into the new year. Uh, Advent begins that. And so it's a, it's a good time to pause and to reflect and to kind of take a deep breath and get ready for what's next. And uh, so what I wanted to just put in your mind as we pivot from here into the readings and the sermon uh, was to give you a kind of a, a, an understanding of what the sermon will be like. So uh, the first portion of the sermon will be uh, a reflection on uh, the scriptures that we see. Uh, kind of getting us ready and, and preparing us and to think about what it means for Christ to be that in our lives. Uh, but then also, it's going to give us some time at the end of the sermon to reflect. And so Stephen and I have kind of prepared a time of, of prayer and music at the end of that sermon. Uh, my hope was that as we get ready for this new liturgical year. We get ready for this new season. You see things change in the sanctuary. The tone changes when it comes to our focus. Um, that it acts as kind of a bridge, a, a prayerful bridge into uh, where we're going. Uh, it, it, this has been a, a big, busy year in lots of different ways. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, what's happening next. Uh, but it's always important for us to be able to pause when we can to uh, be still. And so that's, that's the hope for the sermon. And I wanted to make sure that you were thinking about that as we move forward. So let's pray and prepare. God, we ask you to be with us as transcendent and magnificent as we think about you on Sundays like this. We also ask that you would be there in our midst that you would invite us forward, that you would allow us to sit with you. So, inspire us, change us, and give us peace. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. The first reading today is from Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16 and then 20 through 24. If you'd like to read along, it can be found on page 803 of the Old Testament. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and dark thickness, thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and strong I will destroy. 
I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flanking shoulder and butted all the way, all, all, at all the weak and, and animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they, will, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them, and I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading for this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. This can be found on page 29 of your New Testament. The nature of how I will be um, preaching here this morning is that it it might be to your benefit to um, have that open. Before I start, if you are going to, pre- uh, to Sunday school, this would be the moment for you to uh, take your leave and go that way. Here we go. Starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And what was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? Then the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment for the righteous into eternal life. My friends, these two are God's words for us this morning. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for a moment. God, we ask you in this time that you would continue to show up for us that you would guide us, and that you would love us. That you would give us strength and endurance for the journey ahead. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. So in general, I am thankful for the fact that our brains work differently. Now, there are times, selective times, that I wish that your brains and my brains worked the same way, but I recognize that that just is, there's a a kind of fool's hope with that. But in general, it's a good thing that you and I look at the world through a different lens. For instance, these folks can do things that I cannot do, and all of you have things that you can do that I cannot. And that is a pretty wonderful thing. And some of you have the ability to learn scripture in a way that I have never been able to learn it, meaning you can memorize certain passages of scripture in a a way that's extraordinarily helpful. 
And I've seen you do it. You've done it in front of me, where you've taken a piece of scripture or you've referred back to some other piece of the conversation and you've been able to relate it to scripture and you can do it chapter and verse. I've never been able to do anything chapter and verse, which is why I usually have notes or I have you know, the Bible in front of me or something. But the way that my brain does work, the way that I can sort of function as someone who, well, has the job that I do, is that I tend to look at things in larger arcs. I need to be able to see how everything connects in front of me in kind of a virtual map. And so I need to be able to go from Adam and Eve in my head to be able to kind of see it, kind of laid out before me. Adam and Eve to Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and then I need to be able to connect them over here to David, and then David to Ezekiel, and Ezekiel, and so on and so forth, until we get to Jesus, and then Jesus to Paul, and Paul to Revelation. I need to be able to see all of that, even with a couple of dates in mind, because it it allows my brain to kind of have an understanding of the big picture, because without it, I get a little bit lost. And so the reason that that's important for me is because I need to be able to see Scripture as connected. Because it's when it gets disjointed, it's when it's uh, segmented, that I I start to lose the the power of it. And that's one of the interesting things about the Reign of Christ Sunday, is that it gives us a moment to kind of see how everything is connected. Because we see the life of Jesus and even if you, were, if you were thinking about being a person there um, watching Jesus do his thing, you would only see the segment where he's, where he's kind of on the ground, he's doing the miracles, he's with the people, uh, but you need the bigger picture. And Scripture allows us that, uh, especially uh, Matthew and John, John especially, which we're not reading for this morning, but the, the Gospel writers give us this sense of connection so that we can see where we go. It's why it's so important that when we talk about Jesus, especially on this Sunday, we talk about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, right? They took a very practical thing, the the Greek alphabet, right, which everyone was using at the time. Beginning and end, I am this to you. An analogy that people could get their heads around, but see this larger arc and then start to ask questions about how all that connects. And when I started to look at this passage for this morning, one that you and I have read many, many times, I needed that kind of connection. And so if you've opened the, or you have available to you, uh, the Matthew passage that we're reading for this morning, uh, what you see in there is Jesus trying to make connections for people. And he's saying, look, we, you are these folks. There are those who get it, and there are those who don't get it yet. And you and I can look at that from a lot of different angles. We can look at that from our own personal perspective, but we can also look at it from a broader perspective, because I think the subtitle of the passage, what does it say in your Bible? The judgment of the nations is something like that? Who has? That's the, okay. So we look at that not just from a personal perspective, but also from a broader perspective. Uh, societal perspective. So that's one way that we step back from it and look at it like that. But the other way that we look at it differently is through uh, looking at the passage from start to finish. Because if we don't, then we miss this huge piece of this passage that we know so well. Because usually the way we look at it and talk about it is that there's there's the judgment of it. We see that element of the scripture. But then we also see the, the ways that God is kind of leading us into a way of right living, right? That we are those who uh, seek out the poor, who seek out the, those who are on the margins, and those who are inviting in are being righteous. And that's a, a really important element of all of that. But it connects with things that Jesus had already been doing. And so the, the first, there's a parable right in the beginning of that passage, Matthew 25. And that parable talks about uh, bridesmaids. And these bridesmaids are, are um, well, basically what's happening in this story, if you go to the first 12 verses or so of the story, is that the bridesmaids are preparing to go and meet this bridegroom. 
and they all have lanterns because it's dark. I don't know why they're doing this at night. It's just, that must be the tradition. And so they're going to meet the bride's groom, and they have these lamps. Um, but some of them must have trusted the idea that bride's grooms are always on time because this one was not. Uh, and so, but some of them uh, r- recognize that sometimes that happens, that, that people aren't on time, and so they brought extra oil. And so now you have, you have two groups. You have one group of bridesmaids who were, were prepared for what, was, what could happen, and they had extra oil with them, and then another group that was not as prepared. They were just maybe a little bit more trusting, or they were in a rush, or who knows. They didn't bring extra oil. So what happens at the end of the parable is that you have now the prepared and the not-so-prepared. And the not-so-prepared are out of luck. But the prepared, of course, who have the oil and who have the light and can get to where they're going are received into where the bridegroom is. So there's a, there's a kind of a personal lesson there about what it means for us to um, be prepared for what God has brought to us. But there's also another way of kind of seeing this story, which I'll get to in a second. So the, the next part of the, the next parable, the next part of the passage, is that there's this thing about the talents. Now that's the part of the, uh, the passage that I could have done last week, but didn't. And so in that passage with the talents, what we have there is a story about, uh, well, three more people who are, um, some are doing it the way that they're, they know they're supposed to, and then one that isn't. So what happens is we have this landowner, and the landowner has three slaves. And the landowner is going to go away, and uh, the landowner gives the slaves all money, talents, all a, a portion of funds, and leaves. Now, the first two invest the money in the ways that they believe would be advantageous for the landover, and the other slave just buries it in the ground. Well, when when the owner of the land comes back, the the first two, of course, are praised, and then the, the one who didn't do anything, who just buried it in the ground, is shamed for being lazy or something. Um, but, of course, that one is explaining to the landowner, I know not only that you are a harsh person, but that you also reap where you do not sow. Which should give you some clue as to maybe who we're talking about and who we're not talking about in terms of who the landowner is. And the landowner is like, yeah, well, if you knew that I wasn't a very good person, you should have compensated for that, basically. You're out. So we have these really interesting parables right before we get to this passage which we feel like we know so well with the sheep and the goats. And of course it's about the judgment of the nations. And what happens in the story that we have for this morning of course is that we have you didn't do this and you didn't do this and you didn't do this but all of those actions are caring empathetic actions. They're not about caring for self, they're not about any of those things, they're about giving things away. And yet the other two parables leading into this one are all about being prepared and being a good little economist and making sure that you have all your ducks in a row and being good at playing the game. Because if you're good at playing the game, then God will love you. We just got done with Thanksgiving. We just got done with Thanksgiving. And then we have Good Good Friday and Saturday Saturday and all those other things where it's like, give thanks and then go get as much stuff as you can. Really? Like we didn't didn't even have 24 hours? We get good at playing the game the way that someone tells us to play it. But then what we forget is that We only talk about Jesus as king because Jesus as king is supposed to mean something different than what other kings do, what other systems are about. Jesus isn't playing the same game as everybody else seems to be. Because I've never been as good at the game as I want to be. Even my position, even with all the advantages I have, I'm not always as good at the game. 
I have a brother-in-law who's really good at it. He's one of those people that just knows how to, like, he just knew, he's good at living. He's good at being a person. He just knows how to fix things and do things, and is very practical. And whenever I have a problem or whenever I don't know what to do about some light fixture or something that might, some weird noise my car is making, he's always the guy I talk about. But he's also, he would probably give me some advice on insurance or something like that. He just, he knows about the world around him, and he's learned how to navigate it. He's also in computer science. He just understands the world and the way it works. And sometimes I fall short. And I often feel bad about that. Because I've been trained to feel bad about that. Because I should be someone who has it all together all the time and knows how to play all the games really well. I need to be more prepared. I need to have it more together. I need to, have my, I need to understand 401ks better. I need to make sure that I have all those things that we the world tells us we need to be good at or we're just bad people. Have your lamps in order. Invest my money for you. It wasn't going to do anything for the slaves, by the way. Invest my money better. Yeah, I'm a bad person, but do it for me anyway because that will allow you to succeed in the system. And then we get to Matthew 25, at the end of the chapter, and it reminds us, reach out to the poor. Reach out to the sick. Reach out to those who don't have anything. Not a little bit of clothes, they're naked. Reach out to the oppressed. Reach out to the people on the outside. And if you're not doing that, then you or the folks who are out. That's the kingdom, that's the kingship of Jesus. Taking the things that you and I assume that we know and assume that we are always supposed to be doing and flipping them completely on their heads and reminding us that it's about something else. It's about something else. I don't have... uh, magic wand to fix the things around me and I'm not always going to know exactly what to do because I'm going to leave here and I have to play the game as much as you do. I'll have my taxes to figure out in a couple of months and I got to make sure I re- renew my some registration for my car here soon and I got to get the vehicle whatever it is done and I have to get all the things done that you do have to get done. And I'll try. And sometimes I'll do fine. Sometimes I'll have to call Craig. (laughs) But ultimately, that's not what we're asked to do in the kingdom of Christ. So this morning, what I'm hoping that you'll do with me is we try to figure out all of this. What I'm hoping that you'll do with me is pray. And as you've heard me say many, many times, prayer is the beginning of something, not the end of something. We pray so that we might be inspired. We pray that we might be connected with who God is. We pray that we might be connected with each other and that we might allow ourselves to be open to the ways the Spirit can move within us so that we can act the actions and the justice that we're called to. So I'm just going to read each segment. I'm going to read each segment of the passage. And then my friend here is going to play a little something. And for each segment of the passage that we, wrote, or we read here for this morning, I'm going to pause, and he's going to play, and you're going to have a moment to just simply pray about that. If you want to pray about it for what can I do, right? what can Sarah Jane do today, if you want to pray that, that's wonderful. If you want to pray about it from a perspective of what can Northmont do, what can we be doing all together, that's wonderful. A neighborhood, a nation, a world, all of them at the same time, 
It's completely up to you. That's our vision for this morning. So let us read and pray. All the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked and you gave me clothing.
I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Let us pray together. Holy and loving God, you have provided for us in every way. We still struggle. We still have to navigate the world as it is. Thankfully, we have individuals around us who care for us and love us. And we don't always feel like we do that very well. Our lamps go out too quickly sometimes, and out of fear, we bury things. We're not always the people that society or our parents or someone told us that we have to be in order to be good somethings. Being citizens of the kingdom that we are in can sometimes be a difficult thing. There's a lot of pressure to do a certain thing, to look a certain way, to be whatever. But one of the things that we lean on, one of the things that we try to remind ourselves is that your kingship, the whole idea of you being among us and before us from beginning to end, is that we can see the world, but also see ourselves differently. Because you see us differently. And we need constant reminders that that is true. That your empathy and love and compassion go far beyond whatever pressures the world puts on us to be certain things. That if we aren't leading the way in terms of caring for the other, the ways that you have cared for us, then we have simply missed the point of the kingdom that you are trying to create in us. So we thank you for this time. We thank you for the moments to pray. 
that we might envision for ourselves, for our community, for our nation, for our world, ways of living and loving that are more faithful to you. We pray that you would continue to show us your light and your love. We pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together, my friends, this morning using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now, my friends, in response to what it is that you bring here this morning, what are the prayers, joys, concerns that you would like to share one with another? And uh, I'll start over here. Anything? This side. Yes. You're all thanksgiving doubt. You're all... Pr okay, we got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for all the ways that you love us. Thank you for the space to pray this morning. 
Thank you for all the ways that you have shown love and compassion to the people in front of me. And thank you for all the ways that they have done the same for me. We continue to lift up those things within our hearts. We continue to watch the news and read stories of conflict and peace, of struggle. We continue to try to understand the ways that we can be your compassionate people in the world. So we ask that you would open our eyes and our ears to ways that we can do that better. And we endeavor to do all of these things, to strive, to care for the least of these, because of the ways that your Son has loved us, has shown us the way, has given us grace, and has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if the ushers would please come forward, we'll receive this morning's (coughs) offering.
gracious God, inspire us as we seek to be your church. We thank you for all that you have given to us, and we ask that you would continue to walk with us and lift us up and give us strength as we seek to do your will. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. just a few things before the benediction. First, uh, please know that there are Stephen ministers among you. Uh, one is here on my left, and uh, there are those who are giving, uh, who are able to give you uh, their time and their talents in prayer. Uh, also, I believe that Gwen uh, sparring with the devil is, uh, is going to be uh, doing the wellness calls this week, and so if you need to pass along any information, you can certainly uh, give her a call or an email. 
Uh, second, uh, facilities it will, uh, is hosting the fellowship time downstairs. And so what you'll see is a charcuterie board of uh, uh, toilet paper and uh, light bulbs that would need replacing and the things that need done. Uh, there's a list on the wall. You can just ask somebody. Larry, just raise your hand and uh, just go see him. You and I uh, are those who go into this new liturgical year with hope and, uh, and expectation and peace and love and joy and all of those things that we are going to be talking about and thinking about and reminding ourselves about in the new year. Uh, but we are also those who are compelled. We are compelled to love each other differently and compelled to help Christ usher in a kingdom that looks differently than the world that we are used to and that we have allowed to be the norm. And so as we go forward into the world, what we do is that we look to each other and we look for the signs, the signs of something new happening that we can be a part of, that we can help to usher in. And thankfully and prayerfully, we do none of these things alone. But we go forward as the people of God, prepared for a world made new with the love, with the hope of the one who creates us and redeems us and sustains us now and always. Amen.